Today, voting is going on in the fifth phase of the Lok Sabha elections. 49 parliamentary constituencies in eight states and union territories are in the polls. But let's focus on Ladakh, Jammu and Kashmir and West Bengal. Now, first is Ladakh, where the lone constituency heads to polls today. It's primarily a three-way contest between the BJP, the Congress, and an independent candidate. While Ladakh has seen many religious and regional divides, this time it's going to be a little bit different. There's one issue that's going to play big during these polls, the matter of statehood. The candidates are the BJP's Tashi Gyalsin, the Congress's Sering Namgyal, and an independent candidate who has jumped into the fray, Mohammed Hanifa Jan. Over 1.4 lakh voters exist in this region. Now we shall focus to Jammu and Kashmir, where Baramulla is the seat in the north of the valley that heads to the polls today. The valley will see the most high-profile contest between National Conference leader and former Chief Minister Omar Abdullah, Sajid Ghani Lone of the PC, and Engineer Rashid, who is contesting as an independent from behind bars. He's also been charged under the UP, UAPA. Now in the state of West Bengal now, the TMC plays defense, guarding its home ground. Arambagh, Bangao, Barakpur, Haura, Hooghly, Serampur, and Uluberia, all of these constituencies are voting today. That's seven out of the 42 constituencies in the state. High-profile and high-stakes contests in Hooghly, in Serampur. And as many as 88 candidates are in the fray, over half of the booths in West Bengal are sensitive as well, which is why security has also been heightened. Now, we actually have our guest joining us. We have Ms. Sujata Pandey, who's a political analyst. We want to welcome Ms. Pandey to the broadcast. Thank you so much for taking out your time and speaking to us here about the special elections because Phase 5 is currently going on. And we also want to welcome another guest of ours who's with us, Tawseef Ahmed Khan, who is also a lawyer and a political analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Ms. Pandey, I want to come to you first. First, I also want to begin with our focus on Ladakh. What I wanted to ask you is about a matter that we've been seeing... All right, sorry. Small change in plans. We're going to listen in to statements that are being made by Iknath Shinde and Maharashtar CM. Now, you can see in the visuals, remember Maharashtra is importantly also in the polls today itself. Iknath Shinde is there. We are awaiting a statement, but while we await that statement, we will take a look at uh, what else is going on because remember even Uttar Pradesh is where you're having elections today. All right, we're crossing over to my colleague Abhishek who's joining us from Mumbai. Uh, Abhishek, tell us more about the key contest there and how voter turnout is looking at this point. Uh, we are reporting since morning 7 a.m. as the voting has begun in Mumbai, and you can understand, you know, uh, as we are standing out an important polling booth in Juhu. And so, tell my cameraman to show you. You know, these are the excited Mumbaikas who are out on field and looking out at their voter slip and uh, checking their booth numbers and going inside this important uh, uh, Jamna Bai Narsi International School. And uh, this is the Juhu area which comes under Northwest constituency, which is now witnessing a battle. Sena versus Sena veteran. Remember in Mumbai, uh, there are out of the six seats, three seats are having Sena versus Sena battle, and this is one of the seats where in uh, northwest is the seat where the political battle that is Sena versus Sena. And in, most importantly, this is also an important seat because, you know, high profile celebrities like the Bachchan's family, Roshan family, and uh, uh, Kapoor's, they come out here and vote, and we all are waiting for them. You know, since morning, in fact, Faresh Rawal just voted a few minutes back and also gave a message that across the city of Mumbai, people should come out in huge numbers and cast their vote. And this is what is being uh, told by the Election Commission also. And remember, the politicians are expecting that, you know, uh, the target of 2019 will be broken today. And this is the turnout. We can witness that since morning, it is consistently increasing. But definitely, as the heat waves, uh, heat prediction and heat conditions are concerned, you know, things can uh, make uh, voting uh, a bit slow in the afternoon. Uh, here you can see uh, one of the celebrity uh, has come on this important booth. And uh, uh, yeah, he's at the, the Dharmendra. You can clearly see his car is going inside. And I would like my cameraman to show you 
uh, that uh, you know one of the important uh, booth that we are in and it is actor dharmendra who has come out to vote here and you can clearly see in the visuals you know actor dharmendra actor dharmendra is right out here and that's what i was pointing out it's an important constituency wherein we are expecting uh, deol family one of the member is right here in fact bachchan family is expected uh, to arrive here soon and at the same time other celebrities are also expected to come out here and this is what it makes this uh, constituency a high profile constituency and definitely the political dynamics have changed now because in 2019 we have seen bjp and undivided uh, sena contesting together but this time it is mahayuti versus mahavikas agadi on one side we have uddhav thakre and sharad pawar riding on the sympathy wave and on the other side bjp and their allies are betting on the development agenda back to you Absolutely, Abhishek. Thank you so much for joining us and getting us all of that crucial information. We'll continue to return to my colleague Abhishek there for more updates. Right now, we're going to shift focus back to Ladakh at this point. Um, Ms. Pandey, I want to come to you first. I want to ask you, can you explain how significant statehood is going to be in the, of the, in the minds of the voters today? Because this particular seat, this region in particular, is going to be witnessing an issue-based election. So, so I think this is the first election after abrogation of 370 and after Ladakh got his UT status. And this is, of course, uh, an important election because Ladakh, if you see the history, the way it uh, always there has been a re regional and religion politics, which is mixed. So, uh, but this time also, if you see there, you have issues of, uh, you know, what's uh, about the apex body of Ladakh and then there is Kargil Democratic Alliance. So, so they coming together and asking for the statehood of the, the six um constitution and they so that that issue is going to dominate i in my opinion but i do do see a edge in uh, for bjp because uh, uh, like everywhere else people in ladakh know that it is modi who gave them ut status and it is modi who could give them the statehood election i mean a status as well because which, which was mentioned in the current residue recently that once you know the the new government comes in you know the it will be considered to make ladakh as a, as a full state rather than if you consider the upa the ladakh was just in district right like and there was no representative from ladakh so it is under pm leadership only when ladakh saw that uh, the ut status and you know the infrastructure portion and the tourism push etc so i think bjp clearly has a has an edge there i i don't see any major uh, problem over there the the, the sonam wakchuk agitation was was there but i think the, after it's been postponed and postponed people also could could relate that it is if there is one government which could solve their problem it is uh, pm modi's uh, leadership very interesting in fact i want to bounce yeah. off of something that you just mentioned and we're going to be heading over to yes can you hear us yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think i lost you between so yeah. all right so that's fine that's fine so i just wanted to thank you for your response there we also want to cross over to uh, mr ahmed khan who remains with us is a lawyer and a political analyst as well um so khan what i wanted to ask you is i wanted to bounce off of something that ms pandey also just mentioned i want to talk about how the parties are dealing with the demand for statehood because we've been seeing massive protests also take place in the previous months now as also mentioned by ms pandey mr jiju has been very careful with his words while campaigning but he has said that all demands will be met by the modi led government in the, in the next five years giving a very clear implication about me accepting statehood and saying yes we're going to give you statehood but the congress's manifesto has stayed away from anything which is statehood related do you think the congress is choosing to play it safe and if so why you see aisha in a democracy ultimately the job of the leader is to impose the will of the people the demand is from the people to bring back the statehood and statehood in the sense uh, you know they, because there are problems which are currently uh, you know un unanswered we have seen it's a popular demand people out on the street taking out rally and you know various uh, influencers and various uh, people of the society you know famous people uh, they have also in support of this demand so while bjp has given a very uh, you know um, like a generic statement that they every time do congress has kept it very 
uh, professional you know they cannot uh, guarantee any you know anything that they cannot get, uh, you know fulfill they refrain from promising so once depending on the uh, outcome of the result party will decide uh, how the problems of the people can be solved the demand from the people is that their problems should be solved whether it can whether the solution can be achieved by uh, going back to statehood or by any other means that is something that the party will explore post the result ultimately it is the government who has to take the decision and opposition can play a very minimal role as to apprise the government of the prevailing situation as to uh, inform the government about the will of the people if government is so disconnected uh, with the people and since you know the entire jammu and kashmir region, region is a a little uh, sensitive uh, area considering the national security threat and the insurgency this uh, you know has to be explored uh, in a in a post poll situation Absolutely. Tawseef Ahmed Khan, thank you for that. Do remain with us. But we also want to cross over to a reporter who's joining us now on the broadcast. Uh, we have my colleague Adrija who's joining us, and she's joining us from Hooghly in West Bengal. Uh, Adrija, tell us more about the voter turnout and the key contest that's going to be taking place there. Well, absolutely, you see very interesting seats are, are going to poll today. One of the very interesting seat happens to be Hooghly, which can also be called as a star seat because both the BJP and the TMC have filed uh, actresses in the in this particular Hooghly seat. One, Lokit Chatterjee, the BJP candidate, who also happens to be the sitting MP of uh, BJP from Hooghly. She has been re-nominated re by the party. And at the same time, Rachana Banerjee, who happens to be the host of a very popular Bengali reality show, and TMC have Filed her as a strategy because to uh, to gain the uh, women rural women uh, vote bank uh, from this particular seat. At the same time, Bharatpur also uh, is another very interesting uh, contest going on there between Arjun Singh, who formerly was in TMC, but now uh, after being denied a ticket, has joined the BJP. And uh, Partha Bhumi, the TMC candidate. Uh, and, and yet another important seat is the Sri Rampur seat, where, uh, which was won by the TMC last time. Uh, TMC MP Kali and Banerjee is contesting once again from the Sri Rampur seat. So, uh, you know, se several interesting seats. In fact, uh, very important candidates also being filed by the party. Celebrities being filed by the parties and uh, the voter turnout since morning has been pretty good as well and uh, people are coming out voting uh, and exercising their rights and of course the uh, you know it will be an interesting mm -hmm. to see what the results and the outcomes of these particular uh, seats especially from the state of West Bengal be like. All right, Adirja, thank you so much for joining us and giving us that information. Now. Coming back to you, Ms. Pandey, uh, what I wanted, let's now shift our focus to West Bengal since we've gotten that update from our colleague there on the ground. You know, over half of the booths are sensitive in today's voting. Uh, security deployment has been increased after sporadic instances of violence were witnessed during the fourth phase. Why do you think poll violence, post poll violence as well, continues to remain such a big issue in the state of West Bengal? Well, sure, I think that you yourself, your question itself has the answer. 57% of the polling booths today are sensitive, hmm. you know, and most of them have been deployed in Hubli and you, know, you have Barakpur and all. That itself explains what is the situation in the state for the law and order. I think political violence uh, has been normalized in West Bengal. As you see, no, the, in, in once upon a time, you would hear such incidences from Bihar and UP. But now you don't hear such incidences from Bihar. The entire election goes smoothly. But be, be a panchayat election, be a, be a Lok Sabha election, or be a state election. You know, you, you are bound to hear some political violence, some killing, some bombing in, in West Bengal. And that itself is a matter of shame, not just for Mamta Banerjee's government, but for, for all of us as a democracy. It's a blood in the democracy. And I think people of Bengal, for what they are and for the Bengali pride that they have, they must question themselves that what is this the kind of government and the example they set, they, they set by, by calling the Bengali legacy. This is neither for Mati, neither for Manush and neither for Ma. Another thing is, you know, uh, if you see to this election, I think is going to change that way because unlike any other election, you know, earlier, 
corruption is going to become one big issue which is which has now become social issue especially because of the scam related to the ssc and with the dismissal of the 25000 or teacher which supreme court later stayed i think mamta banerji is going to really uh, get you know face lot of tough times in this time and i, I am seeing bjp really uh, gaining few more seats than than it had done in the 2019 in, in, in any case if you see the 2019 the vote share between the bjp and the tmc is hardly 2 2 to 3% and with the, with the corruption become ramp become so rampant in the in the mamta banerjee government with, with bundles of notes being you know just shown on the, the media if you remember the the what came out of the partha uh, chatterjee's house you know the the amount of machines needed to count that kind of money the people of bengal have realized that this is a government of cut money this Absolutely. is a government of corruption and they have to say no to this this time Interesting of course i mean there are other funding. factors but i think but, corruption uh, I is going to, to become shift focus a very slightly issue. and we also want to focus on jammu and kashmir at this point but because it's a very important contest that's taking place you have omar abdullah in the fray and uh, mr khan i want to come to you for this it's a contest between two tall leaders of the valley but you have engineer rashid who's been charged under the uapa and behind bars entering the fray for the second time how do you think this bodes for the candidates so the candidate will wear it as a uh, feather on his cap because merely charging anyone under uapa has been a trend by this government the conviction rate and the acquittal rate and ultimately when the supreme court or the high court has given bail uh, you know the the observation by the court they all speak that how poorly the police have framed charges and there has been misuse of uapa more than the use of it therefore merely allegate putting an allegation especially in the valley the public perception uh, you know is different anyone who has a cases against him is not seen differently and it is not a corruption uh, charge that he that he is uh, accused of now had this been a corruption charge involving money then public perception would have been different so it is really upon the people of the valley to decide who they want to uh you know vote for whether omar abdullah still uh, enjoys the confidence or has he lost the confidence you know he, uh, no doubt he is uh, one of the tallest leader being the ex chief minister but uh, uh you know a lot has changed in the past uh, several years and under bjp rule the the real the main you, you know the the main takeaway uh, for the people is that whether bjp the whether the promises uh, made by bjp while taking away the statehood has been uh, fulfilled or not if the if the people of the valley think that no the promises made were all hollow and nothing uh, has really happened on the ground then people uh, will decide to vote for an alternative and umar abdullah uh, uh, comes as a an, uh, you know very credible alternative uh, be, be, being the ex chief minister so he might have a good chance all right pretty interesting points there as well uh, mr ahmed khan miss pandey thank you so much for joining us we appreciate you taking out the time here unfortunately we'll have to wrap it up with this